tools. There are many tools around. Simple tools, complex tools, all-purpose tools, tiny tools, and the biggest tool of all. Now, generally, we tend to know all the most common tools around. However, there are also a bunch of tools which are super specialized for particular industries. Uh, like this tool right here. I mean, what could it be used for? You see, like, there's a bit here that turns, but then this bit here also turns, and then you have, like, a metal thing here with, like, railings, and you have, like, a little handlebar with a hole. So, I mean, na naturally, this tool is used to, like, break pins out of bicycle chains. But, I mean, you knew that, right? If you didn't know that, well, there's a big chance you don't fix bikes for a living, since this tool doesn't really serve much of a function outside of breaking bike chains. But before you all collectively say, so what, big whoop, and start hitting the unsubscribe button, not all specialized tools are like these niche things that only serve one purpose and are completely useless outside of it. Some tools are actually so useful that you wonder why, like, no one is at least familiar with them. I do this thing called content creation, which is like this big fancy term for just making funny videos and live streams on the internet. And the absolute best tool that I've come across, without which I could not do anything that I'm doing right now, and one which I regularly use outside of work as well, is OBS Studio. Now in short, OBS Studio is like this free software program for a computer, which allows you to record, live stream, and present, well, almost anything. That's also why it's called Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS. And as you can see right here, well, it looks a bit boring, but that's because it allows you to create the fun stuff. So how do we do that? Well, let's start by taking a look at the most prominent thing on the screen right here, which is like this big box over here. This right here is called your scene, which is basically like your blank canvas in which you can put whatever you like. The things you can put on there are called your sources. And if you want to put a source on your on your scene right here, you click the plus there. And then as you can see, oh, that's a whole list of things that we can put on there. Now, don't worry. For this video, we're only going to be working with four sources. The first one that we're going to start out with is the video capture device, which is basically like any camera that you have connected to your computer. We're going to select it. And then you have this little box right here where you can create a new device and give this thing a name. I'm just going to hit OK. There you go. Now it's perfect. But also so not really all that special since basically like any camera is supposed to capture itself. What makes OBS so great is that we can also add something more to here. Like for instance, a video game. If you want to add a video game, we go to the plus again. And then we go to game capture right here. Here you can give it a name, which I'm just not going to do. I'm going to hit OK. And then right here, what you see is that we can capture any full screen application. Or what we can do is like we can capture a specific window. I like to capture a specific window so that I know that I'm connecting like the right window to it. What you can see right here is a game that I have running right here in the background. But this doesn't really look right. In order to adjust this, what we need to do is we need to make the picture smaller. To do this, we just grab one of the corners, drag it down, bring it back up, and then just repeat doing that until all of a sudden right there, you see that it is perfectly fitting the screen. As you may have already noticed while we were moving the game around, the camera is hidden behind the game capture right now. The way to fix this is we can grab the video capture, move it above the game capture. Now we have our camera again, and then we just grab the corner of the video, and then we move it all the way to around here, where it looks good. Now what we have is we have our game, and we have ourselves, and we can start our very first gaming live stream. But maybe you don't really want to start a gaming live stream. Maybe you'd rather want to just record a video on your computer. In that case, we're going to need a new scene. That's something we can do right here in our scenes list, where if we click the plus right here, which we use to create new sources, right here we create a brand new scene, which will give the very stunning name of uh, scene two. Right here, you see the canvas goes black again. Uh, and that means that we can add something new here, which right here will be a display capture. Now a display capture is kind of like a game capture. However, instead of capturing like your entire game, it captures your entire display, from which you can do like code tutorials to showing grandpa how to use Word. Now, this basically just works if you just want to record something, but what if you want to make sure that this plain old desktop is like your plain old desktop and people know about that? One thing that we can do is like add your little like branding to it in the form of a logo. In order to do this, we can go back to the plus again and add a little image source. We're going to browse our image right here, which is called logo. We're going to hit open. And there we go. We have our little branding right here. Now, we may want to go and like move this thing around to like a corner there and then make it smaller. And then there you go. We have our own little branding, like the good old television days. 
The only thing that's still missing is like the eight minutes of uninterrupted ads. I'm sorry if this like bores the hell out of you because like I know that not everyone wants to be like a live streamer or a video maker and this just happens to be a very specialized tool for those two things. But I just think that's like so useful to be able to very easily record a video from your computer. Like technology is hard, especially for the elderly. It's only once you start helping out your grandparents with like setting up their accounts that you realize what a bloody mess this thing is. With everything nowadays requiring like 10 different sign-ins that no one remembers the password to, there being no support other than these stupid chatbots that have never ever ever given a useful answer in their entire miserable existence, and everything, literally everything, requiring this online login nowadays. Oh, I hate you, Windows 11. And while some of us have the comfort of just being able to like drive by and visit our family members in need and just help them set it all up, sometimes, you know, like we are too far away to help them out or we're just too busy living our own lives. Being able to then just in your own time, capture a video where you, boom, capture your display and blam, put yourself in the corner, can just be so helpful in guiding your family members in like opening a word file or finding where the printer is. Another way in which I like to use OBS is like in combination with video calling software. If you go over here to this little control section in OBS, there's this option here that says start virtual camera. Let's go and uh, give that a press, shall we? Now, if we open up our like video calling software and let's change our webcam for this OBS virtual camera. You see that? What has happened is that this output right here has now become the video feed right here. This is something which I use like all the time whenever I'm doing presentations over Zoom or just sharing my screen to people. Right here, if you combine it, like it gives so much more of a personal touch. And what's more, OBS allows for a lot more control because, ooh, what is this? Studio mode. <gasps> a second screen. Oh yeah, the studio in OBS Studio also has a meaning to it. Because what you see right here is that we have two displays. This right here is the thing that everyone sees in like your live stream or your video or your presentation. And this right here is a site where you can do whatever you want. So you can prepare different things for like a presentation or just, a, or just tiny little things. Or what you can also do is create like this, this blank scene right here which you can cut to in case something goes wrong and you don't really want to show what the hell is happening. I find the studio mode like so handy whenever I'm doing like this video conferencing style because I can kind of like prepare things beforehand, I can adjust things on the fly and I have full control of what people get to see and what they don't get to see. Like we're presenting this, like look at the facts right here, but now let's talk about it if you want to do something like that. And that way you can make this like a lot more dynamic instead of like being able to like turn off the screen, then go back to like the full camera, then go back to this, go back to that. Here it's just like one single press of the button. Getting started with OBS shouldn't be too hard as when you set it up, it should just have like this auto configuration wizard thing that just sets it up with like the best settings for your computer. One thing that I recommend you do take a look at is that your audio here is working. This right here is the audio mixer. And what you see right here is like you have your desktop audio and your microphone. If you see like this little green bar right here, that means that it's picking up audio. But if it's like completely flat like here, it's not picking up audio at all. Also, there's like these little sliders right here, which if you turn them up, like the audio gets louder until it becomes like red and you can turn it all the way down until like no one can hear anything anymore. What I like to do is kind of like let it sit where it kind of like tips into that yellow zone because red just screws with the audio. This is kind of what I recommend. If you don't see anything at all, just check it in your settings under audio. There should be like your desktop audio and your mic. Right here, you should be able to choose which microphone you want to use and which desktop audio you want to use. Another thing that you may want to take a look at is like go to stream and then like set your uh, your live stream keys or connect your accounts as I explained like the live streaming video. Finally, if you want to record video, go to like the output tab and then go to recording and make sure that your recording format is set to like Matroska or the MKV. Basically, this is a format that allows you to like save your recording even if like OBS or your entire PC crashes. This is just a super reliable backup and then once you're done with your recording you can go up to file and then remux recordings and then just select your recording right here and hit remux to like convert your MKV file to an mp4 file that every device and every piece of media will be able to play. I think that that's kind of like the overall basics of what OBS is and how it works. Of course there's like so much more interesting stuff that you can do with it than just like putting one single image on a screen. Like especially if you're using it for streaming there's so much more that you can get into. Just like look at my friend Joey and like all the insane stuff that he does on his stream. However, all of the stuff that he does and that everyone does in OBS kind of has its roots and just like placing sources and places and working around with it. It's kind of how music is only made from like a handful of notes that make every single piece of music from the worst trash to like the most beautiful masterpiece. So if any of this stuff seems like remotely interesting to you, like just go and give this program a download and just see what you can do with it. And if you get bored with whatever OBS is 
to offer. Like there are so many more like community plugins that do even more crazy stuff that, oh man, there's like this entire world to explore, which like right now you've only seen like the tiniest little surface of. I really hope that I didn't bore you to death with this video about recording software, but like this is kind of like pretty much at the core of what I do. I mean, even right now, I'm using OBS right here as like a viewfinder to see what I'm pointing at. So even if you didn't wake up this morning thinking, hmm, I want to learn about this stuff, I still hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed the content I'm making, you want to support it, for just $1 a month, I make overtime. Overtime right here is like my extra show where for $1 a month, I make these extra videos where this week, what we're going to be doing is like creating a brand new scene to get her in OBS. Like I'm going to be making like a new live stream show and for that, I need to have a new scene, which I want to make together with you guys so you can see like what I do in OBS rather than just like the standard uh like background and then one thing on top of it. Uh, we're gonna be doing something like a little bit more advanced and I just want to like have a fun time while we put it all together together. That said, thank you all so much for watching this video and also thank you so much for like your support in the last video. I really did not expect it to blow up as much as it did and like seriously, all your kind words and everyone jumping in to join the channel, like it really means so much to me. So thank you so much for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as like the last video and if you didn't, hopefully next video will be the one for you. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you all next time.